All right, guys, here we go. We are in the 2025 beast mode from Storyteller Overland. I've got my new friend, Brian. Hi. Brian is involved in product development, engineering. What? What it, you said your official title? It's it's, it's a little bit long. It's convoluted uh, it's, a little bit. Is senior vice president of TED. TED is the group we call it. That's TED stands for Technology Engineering and Design. So it's it's essentially our engineering. It's our new product development. It's our all the things that make Storyteller unique and beautiful. That's that's what we do. And that means you are one of the guys that sort of makes the changes, brings things to life. Yes. And that is why we're talking about what is new and different. Uh, one of the things I'm seeing here is these are not the same colors in this particular van that we've seen before. Yeah. Does this have like a name or are we just call it the lighter color? What do you think? <laughs> well, it does have a name. I mean, not that anybody's really We'll, we'll make sure, yeah, we'll put the name of what this color is. So we've updated the cabinetry. Yeah. Um, what else is new yeah, inside um, the van? Well, the goal was to lighten it up. Um, we've been using the same color scheme for five years or so. A little bit of a darker wood tones and some more grays. Uh, we tried to kind of warm things up for this this model year. So okay. these are more of a light maple tone on. Uh, on it does look nice. Shower doors, our upper cabinets, uh, all of the tables. There's a outside table here. We have a uh, a portable table that'll mount in the front as well. Okay. Um, all those are matching. We've lightened up the floor a little bit. Oh yeah, and you can see it continuing up on the yeah, doors. Yeah, all, all that. The compliments. Uh, one of the other big appearance upgrades is the we added some uh, LED strip mood some lighting. Some mood lighting yeah. in the back. You guys can see that so, back behind there. And that's all uh, individually controlled through our ModeCom. Um, that's up yonder. Yeah, so we have now have the option of turning on and off the accent lights dimming those um, that's pretty slick there's a lot of ways you can really set the mood in here for kind of nighttime you you just want to have some light light sure lighting, some some ambient sure lights. okay so what what you're standing next to is something that was not for a very long time traditional for right. a storyteller right. what is this yeah what we this is our uh new new this year new ish we, yeah <laughs> it's not a 2025 upgrade but we launched the mode xo i believe in march of this year okay and it comes with the what we call the boom box shower which is just a hard walled uh enclosed shower slash wet bath it's got a uh it's got a uh, cassette toilet uh, that you can pull the cassette out through the exterior. Okay, so you've got a cassette toilet for the outside, yeah. and you've gone for basically a hard-sided shower. Both of these doors open, right? Yeah, so it's a, it's a bifold door, kind of a big... <laughs> Big door and a little door. Okay. Inside, there's a shower curtain. And you can see the reflection off there. You can mirror, see the toilet. Yeah. Mirror. That's another big ask. Uh, that's in, really in nice. These units. Um, and that's on the XO model, correct? That's on the XO model. Uh, we're calling our traditional, our kind of classic model, the OG now. Okay. <laughs> We've got the XO and the OG. The OG, which has the halo shower uh, in the flex space. That so what was what was the idea for adding? Uh, a hard sided shower because one of the things that made Storyteller yeah. stand out was the Halo shower and and the Groove Lounge and all that. What was the idea there? We're just trying to service more customers? Is yeah, that the idea? I think that we realized that people people love the Halo shower um, for its flexibility and open floor plan, but I think we were leaving some customers out who maybe with families who needed more privacy. Um, some people aren't comfortable utilizing a portable toilet. Um, sure. Some people feel more comfortable with hard walls and a door uh, sure. when yeah. they're using the restroom. So yeah, everybody's is, got their own comfort this levels. This is for and... everyone else. And I mean, a lot of us have wives. <laughs> <laughs> My wife is, uh, has, has made it clear to me that uh, she would not u utilize a portable sure. toilet ever. So um, I think that's not uncommon. And so we wanted to make sure that we had a storyteller mode for everybody. I dig it. I, I think that's totally fair. Yeah. I think it's totally reasonable. And right here to my right, this was uh, what you guys called the Groove Lounge. Right. This would fold flat right. in that other model. What's How's this work now? I'm going to step yeah. back a little bit. Yeah, I mean, the great thing about the Groove Lounge is it's an additional seating, uh, sleeping spot. It completely folds flat. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, with a hard wall right here, you're not going to be able to fold it flat. Um, in in this instance so we came up with a new seat we call this the electric slide uh, because it slides and it has an electric 
recline. Okay. So what you have here show me, is... Show me this. This, yeah. is, this is pretty slick. So where the, um, the Groove Lounge is a true bench, um, it seats two. This is two individual seats. Oh, okay. So each seat slides individually, forward and back, and the aisle seat slides out. So... If oh, got, I see. You know, when you showed me that earlier, I did, I thought they both yeah. they both came out together. Yeah. So this one stays against the wall. It does not slide. This one gets slides out for more leg room. So um, one of the things we hear on the Groove Lounge is it's great for kids, but if you seat two adults, you know, you're really you're you're sitting pretty tight. So this is great for our bigger kids, even kids who just need to get away from yeah each other. just a little bit of space <laughs> you know they're they're fighting or yeah hitting each other and all that yeah i get yeah, that so makes it, sense it really um it's and a then really you said the, these recline as well yeah so, can you show me that real quick yeah so if you if so you, you move it that's bump it out far, just a touch it's a little far forward but i mean each one each one will look at fly. that so the further forward you go the more you can sure recline. sure so you get so not a it's not like a what i would call a half-assed replacement for the groove lounge it's just different yeah i think i think these are very comfortable seats sure um, I, I think it's a great and they are belted is this crash rated yeah everything we everything with a everything is belted and pull tested per that's see that's the key is that they're usable you know what i mean like you're not just going hey we put seats there they're actually yeah. usable yeah the other another thing that maybe you, if you come around you can see is we snuck a couple of uh cup holders in between the seats oh that's cool <laughs> one of the other things we hear on the groove lounge is there's nowhere to put your drinks so um there aren't a lot of places to yeah hide, there's to i mean hide cup holders <laughs> so i mean that we took the opportunity to utilize the extra space between the seats so. okay all right guys we're here talking with my new friend Adam, and he's gonna to explain to us the new advanced suspension that is on the new 2025 Beast. Can you tell me why you guys shifted over to this? What's good, what's bad, et cetera? Uh, we, we can try. So. Okay, we're gonna attempt that. We're gonna attempt. Um, so we, we went down this route for a, a few different reasons. Um, uh, one reason is we uh, we definitely like the, to maintain as much of the factory Mercedes uh, geometry and how the, uh, everything works as possible. Uh, keep our friends at Mercedes happy. Sure. Um, so we maintain the factory leaf springs with vulcanized bushings, uh, keeping everything that is uh, in, to the Mercedes Specs. So we've got the factory leaves, and you add the the bushings, or are they the, no, a factory the, part as well? The fa the bushing, the vulcanized bushings are a factory part of the leaf springs that hold everything in. Squeaks, rattles, pops, and rolls. Got are, it. Are Mercedes, so they don't happen. Sure. We are adding in uh, weight carrying capabilities and uh, you know roll control and stability of the vehicle by adding a coilover shock to it. Okay. So the spring rate is being added in by a coil spring. Oh, I see. Added in instead of messing with the factory leaf springs. Um, so this moves uh, moves the geometry over. Has uh, adjustable preload settings, so the the preload can be moved per how much weight you're carrying. Because let's face it, most people like to go a little over the uh, recommended <laughs> yeah. weight yeah, of, no kidding, of these no vehicles. Uh, so that has a little bit of adjustment to it. Um, it's all bolt-on bolt on brackets that added into it. We're not cutting any holes. We're not adding in, you know, drilling and bolting into sheet metal trying to get stability to the van. Uh, so there's been a lot of work that go has gone into how these brackets bolt on, what they do, what they accomplish. How did you guys um, deal with the traditional problem on these uh, short wheelbase 2500s of like the shear, the bolt shear and all that sort of stuff? That's the, is that, that's where a lot of that bracketry comes So that's set. included in your brackets it's as well? It's a double shear bracket okay. going through the frame has uh, the and where the 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 main point of the shot going in we can see is this. actually there we it's go. all inside but inside here there's spools that are going all the way through here pinching both sides of the uh, of the frame and so the 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 transfer of all of that energy is not going just a single point of the bolts right it's going through a spool through the frame rail and squeezing it all together okay that's really cool so you're knocking out the sort of weight compliance uh, issues that some folks have, the sort of rock and roll with a heavier van as it, you know, you're going down the road and, you know, let's face it, we're in Indiana, the roads here are not great. They are not. They are not great. They, neither, they aren't in the south either. Shout out, yeah, exactly. Uh, shout out to all the terrible roads yes. that are like Fallujah instead of the US, right? That's right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, to that point, uh, another reason that the advance, this kit is, is does so well is that we, 
this kit will actually absorb those things. It has the roll control, it has the control for the on-road handling that is an improvement over the Mercedes, but it does not come at a stiffer ride. It doesn't come at rattling the van apart. Sure. It, it will take all of the things and it keeps the inside quieter, keeps everything uh, smoother ride. So more compliant while still maintaining control. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. What about the front? What's going on up front? Front is, uh, uh, it's, it's very similar to a to the factory Mercedes. It, you guys uh, even have like a little boot on there. That's nice. That keeps that clean. Doesn't even look like anything happened there, right? Um, uh, but uh, this is uh, basically just a valving upgrade. Um, okay. So for for the advanced kit, the advanced kit ha the, is a valving upgrade that does all the same things as the rear. Uh, there's no spring rate added. There's no nothing added to the front that changes the geometry. Um, you know, nothing putting CVs at risk or anything like that. Um, but it is adding in that compliant ride and the handling characteristics to make it feel not 10 feet tall. Right, right. And as you know, I drive a 170, I understand how that front end can start to feel right. once you start getting a lot of weight in the van. Uh, I think that's, that's pretty exciting to know that you guys are thinking about that. A lot of brands don't even care. Right. You know, so here you are offering that on a factory vehicle. That's very cool. Thank you so much, Adam. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, guys, another thing that is new for the 2025 is this new bumper. We've got Ryan from Flare Space, good friend of mine. He's going to explain this to us and tell me why this matters. Ryan, take it away, man. Just as John said, this is the new Invader Brush Guard coming on all the 25 Beasts. Uh, what's really cool about this is this is traditionally something that when you need that winch, you remove and replace. Now, you don't have to remove and replace. There'll be an aftermarket option to swap out to do the cradle and to get the winch in there from the factory. So uh, so you've got a cool looking bumper. Mm -hmm. You can pull that skin off. So this is like protection and then you pull the skin off, yeah. install a cradle. This will protect you going down the road from those deer, those left-hand turn cars, uh, <laughs> bumps and bruises, slight skid plate underneath just for some additional protection. However, yeah. if you do need that winch and the shackles, this all comes on the aftermarket side. Something Mercedes you'll never see from the Mercedes factory has new, but on the aftermarket side is available. So your recovery point is factory, sensors work, radar works, the camera works, uh, and you are good to go. This will also fit 2008 on the aftermarket side, 2008 all the way to the new all-wheel drive. Uh, the 2x4s, the 4x4s, the 3500s, the brackets are all available. So this um, is something somebody could buy from you if they're out there building a van and it's like, hey, I want a bumper, but I'm not sure if I want a winch and all that. Mm -hmm. And this bolts up to the factory stuff without causing without causing issue or panic. Uh, it's also a very simple install. Just itself, the bumper itself, the fascia piece, is just six bolts. You're not actually having to remove the fascia itself. Um, so right, like the one, that, the one that I have is a pretty involved install. Six, it's install. a different thing, but yeah. this is sort of a factory plus, OEM plus kind Correct. of upgrade. Yeah, and just like our bumper, uh, it'll retain its $1,700 price bracket area. Which okay. is unhold, un, unheard of in the uh, in the bumper area. Usually you're in the $3,000 bracket and uh, you're in the six hour install. So it's a heavy investment. Um, getting the protection on these front of these vans is crucial. Uh, you've got a little bit of aluminum, a little bit of plastic, protecting your radiator, a def tank, LED headlights. Uh, this takes care of that. And if you want to step up to a winch, it's all there for you. Okay. Thanks, man. No problem. And in terms of exterior upgrades, we've got a few new offerings. Uh, I talked to Ryan about the front bumper, and I talked to, I believe it was Adam, about the new suspension. Yeah. What else is going on, uh, the, the new sort of standards, upgrades, etc.? Um, you know, one of, the, one of the big things we were looking to do was do some aesthetic updates. Um, we haven't made any significant changes to our graphics for a few years. We haven't really change the exterior look. So we, we do have some graphics updates. Um, okay, so some new bit, color offerings, that sort of thing. Yeah, some different color offerings. There's a little bit of a, a similar beast stripe that people know and love, but with a little bit of an upgrade, a little tweak so that you know it's you know it's different. And you guys have done that with the classic yeah. and the, the now we're calling it the dark, dark mode. Right. I did see those. We, we took a look at those here. I saw what are new to me running boards. Yeah, the running boards were a 2024 update on the beast mode only. So uh, in 2024, we added owl running boards and an owl. Um, the box on the rear. Box, yeah, the big owl box. Okay, and now 
uh, this particular van has yeah. a flare space ladder. Yeah, is that so correct? Uh, flare space has got a new ladder, um, and we are installing it on our beast mode only uh, for this new for the 2025 model year. Um, it's it's a really nice ladder. It it has um, D shaped rungs with kind of a, a little bit of texture on yeah, it. Yeah, uh, yeah. So anti slip. So that it's just a really nice, very functional functional ladder that I think will it highlights. Sure. It's just a yeah. It's a good ladder. It's a good ladder. Yeah. It, yeah. It doesn't need to. Be, it's a ladder. I mean, how complicated you, can it, it be? You right. From the ground to the roof. <laughs> yeah. Which is I, I find that what uh, more could you ask for? I find that some people like to make the ladder try and be more than it actually is. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm glad that you and I agree that it doesn't need to be more <laughs> yeah. than a ladder. Yeah, it's it does what it's supposed to do. <laughs> right, it's, right. It is a new ladder. Um, so, in in terms of exterior things, are there any other upgrades? Um, just that, a couple that, of little aesthetic things. I mean, we we showed you, and maybe you'll show some some images of. We did a little. Uh, we did a little light cover. Uh, yes, art, I did get some footage of that. KC lights. We did a little uh, collaboration with KC and our are design the team. are the KC lights now standard on these fans, or is that an Beast addition? Modes. It's, it's okay. standard on Beast mode. So you okay. get a full. There's an eight bar, eight light bar on the roof, and then uh, two lights on the brush guard, plus a full. Spots like complement of lights. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's got a lot of lights, but the you know light bars. We we just kind of tone the color down to a little something that's a little more complimentary with us. Sure. And there's a little bit of storyteller flair built in there. I like as it. Well. I like it. Yeah. Now, has that changed the MSRP significantly? You know, making these changes, or is it uh, about? I know you have to kind of increase. Yeah, with... I, I don't think the upgrades have been. I mean, we're we're you're going we're going to see price increases. Um, it's kind of a natural uh, thing. Kind of an annual percentage increase. We have to absorb things like the cost of the chassis goes up for us every year. Right. Um, the upgrades, you know, we, we do, in addition to adding things, we're always looking to kind of engineer out cost as well without, you know, losing any functionality for the customer. So right. we try to offset the additions as much as possible with other. So uh, other this shower things. that I'm standing next to isn't costing me an extra like 90 grand? No, I mean. <laughs> Uh, you can tell, you can see the difference. You can look at the delta between an OG and an XO, and you can kind of say, like, that's how much the shower, sure. <laughs> how much more the sure. shower costs us. Actually, it does add a, a level it's, of complexity. It's not, I don't have all the prices. Sure, in sure, that's right okay. Now, but um, it's not, it's not a significant increase over the, the standard. Well, Brian, I appreciate it, man. I think this is really cool seeing the the sort of fresh version of this thing. Uh, if people want to learn about it, the website is storyteller.overland.com. That's it. Heck yeah. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate you. Cool. Thank you.